So they let me into the streamies. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And today we are talking about the 2022 Streamy Awards, or what Vanny Fair once called the Oscars of YouTube. Now, I know what you're thinking, Amanda. What a throwback. What are you doing? Where are you at? Yes, I am at my old room at my dad's house. We're having a little family situation happening, and so I've been going back and forth quite a bit. So I'm currently filming in my old room. However, my old room no longer has all the soundproofing I put up, so there's just definitely going to be some audio issues, and then obviously I'm also using my travel setup. So this is just the type of high production quality you get at Small Entertainment. So yes, the other night I went to the Streamies and I wanted to talk about this a little differently than how I normally talk about events that I go to because events I go to, I usually talk about whether or not I think it's worth it for you to go. The thing is, is that the Streamies are not open to the public. They're not open to most YouTubers. <laughs> They're not open to a lot of people. It was very hard for me to get tickets to this thing. The main award show for YouTubers, that's kind of the easiest way I can explain it. There's a word for sports channels, cooking channels, commentary channels, lifestyle, first person, show, creator of the year, breakout creator, uh, streamer of the year, breakout streamer, you know, things like that, okay? It's just, they try to cover the gambit of YouTube categories and content. And this is the first one since 2019 that has happened in person. Obviously, we had a global pandemic. So for 2020 and 2021, the streamies were done social distance with the host kind of traveling around in like party buses, and then everyone who won kind of submitting videos and doing all of that stuff for like, oh, thank you for nominating me. I'm glad to win and all of that. Okay, okay. So this is the first one happening in person. And so when I found out it was happening in person, obviously I was like, get me there let me in. So I uh, reached out to a couple of people. I had a friend who was invited because of his work with YouTube Shorts. I was like, I will be your arm candy for the night if it means I get a video out of it. Uh, he ended up not being able to go. And then um, I went to my management and I was like, hey, can we see if they'll let me in if I like do promotion for them and review the show? Like what, what can we see? So finally my management, hi everyone, if they're watching. So finally my management uh, got a hold of the ticking people and then the ticketing people were like, actually we're at capacity, uh, but we will see what we can do. Um, however, the way I was able to get in is with Carrot Financial. I have a Carrot card. Should I get my Carrot card? Hold on. Carrot on Instagram said, hey, we have a table. Does anyone want to come to our table at the Streamies? And so I DM'd them and was like, me, please. Apparently they were inundated with, uh, you know, people asking to attend for that with them. So they said, hey, actually uh, apply through the rewards page for Carrot Financial. So uh, I have a Carrot card. I am a Carrot card holder. It's personalized. It says Swell Entertainment. It's all Chrome because I wanted to, it to look as bi as possible. Carrot Financial is a financial company and a credit card for content creators. Met one of their co-founders, Eric, uh, uh, I met him at VidSummit when I attended um, their poker party. And I've met a couple other people from Carrot since then. I just keep bumping into Eric. So I was like, hey, guys, let me in, please. I didn't hear from anyone <laughs> about the streamies for a while, but I just kind of operated as if I was going because that's how I find that most things work out for me is if I just if I want to go something and I don't know if I'm, I'm going to be able to go, I just behave as if I'm already confirmed to be going on Saturday the day before the streamies, I got a message from my carrot concierge being like, hi, we saw that you were interested in attending the streamies. We have one seat left at our table. Would you be interested in filling that seat? And I said, yes, please, if possible, that would be amazing. <laughs> and within 15 minutes, I was confirmed to be going and I was sent all my information and I was like, okay, cool, now what? But that is how I was able to attend the streamies is with Carrot Financial. So before I continue, let me talk about some of the options of how you may be able to attend the streamies in the future, okay? Because not only did I have some of you guys reaching out to me, I had a bunch of other YouTuber friends being like, how do we get to the streamies? How did you do that? So like I said, I knew some people at Carrot. I had a Carrot card. Carrot was also one of the sponsors for the streamies and for the streamies after party. Uh, so it just kind of worked out there. There were quite a few tables from companies that were sponsors of the event, uh, but there was also a lot of YouTube management companies. So companies that managed YouTubers, a bunch of them had tables, um, a bunch of, I believe, production companies that work with YouTube as well. Uh, there was a YouTube shorts table or a couple that uh, people were reached out to directly from YouTube to apply if they were shorts creators on the platform. Obviously being nominated, a couple of just big name content creators, like if you're well known in the space, they were invited because my guess is it looks good for you to attend. If you're a big name person, they want you there because kind of raise the overall clout in the room. Before I talk about the streamies themselves, let me talk to you about how 
you can become a nominee for a streamy. You can nominate yourself. YouTube Streamy Awards. Submissions now open. I received this July 28th. Small Entertainment Team. Streamy submissions are open and free this year. So yes, the free this year is important. Uh, you used to have to pay to be nominated. Basically, you would be sent the, hey, the Streamy's nominations are now open. And uh, you... Your team, your management could nominate you. There used to be a fee. I believe it was $149 initially, but for, I believe, the last two years, that has actually been sponsored. The payment side of things has actually been sponsored by the company Jelly Smack so that creators no longer have to pay to be nominated. You just kind of submit your name. The fees are all covered by Jelly Smack. I received this email July 30th of this year. Hey, small entertainment team, streaming submissions are now open and completely free. The deadline... Uh, Monday, August 8th, 2022. And then now obviously this is all closed. I was sent this and I didn't nominate myself because I felt weird about nominating myself. Honestly, it felt weird. I was like, this seems weird. There's no other way to put it. I felt super weird with the thought of nominating myself for something like this. I also was fairly certain that especially because it was free this time, I was not going to make the cut because I knew massive creators were going to be nominating themselves regardless of what categories I submitted myself for. And also I was between management at the time because I left my previous management and I had not yet signed with my current management. So, um, <laughs> I didn't have anyone else to nominate me. So I was just like, we're good. <laughs> I was forwarded an email from the streamies from Carrot. And basically the way that they were doing their COVID protocols this year is that rather than check vaccine status, they needed a negative PCR test within two days of the event. And you had to present that either as a hard copy or as a digital copy before you were able to go and pick up your ticket to enter the event once you got to the Beverly Hilton in Los Angeles. So once I got email saying I was confirmed, I immediately went to downtown LA and got a rapid PCR test. So nothing in anything that I was sent had anything to do with attire. However, it is a more formal event. Obviously it's an award show. My recommendation with any social media-esque slash influencer event, just assume your photo is gonna get taken. Dress like you're cool with the photos ending up online. I've seen streamies in the past online and things like that. And so I was like, okay, there's a kind of a mix of like cocktail dresses, shorter dresses, longer dresses. Not really sure where I'm at. I did already have a dress that I was kind of planning on wearing if I did end up making it to the streamies. However, I hadn't tried it on in a while since it had come back from the dry cleaners. And I was worried about that being my only option than being screwed. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'll just go to the Grove. I'll go walk around. I'll see if I find any other dresses just to have a plan B, just in case. And then I ended up at ASOS and inside ASOS, they have a House of CB installation and I found the purple dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it was good because I walked out of the dressing room to find a bigger mirror and a bunch of girls who were looking for dresses for, I think their high school graduation were like, oh my God, you have to get the dress. You have to get that. Oh my God. And so I was like, okay, I'm getting this dress. And so I want the purple house of CB dress. It's not completely sheer. There is lining. Um, it just goes to like right here, which normally I wouldn't be a fan of, but the lining really matches my skin tone, I think, and kind of blends in really well with the lace detail. So you can't really tell. Also the high leg slit is a new trick that apparently just Anna Ortega uses a lot because she's 5'1 and I'm 5'2 and apparently on shorter statues, leg slits are very flattering and make you look taller. <laughs> now the live stream was actually going to be on Eric's YouTube channel. Eric was the host this year and we will talk about my opinions on that in a moment. <laughs> At the time of recording, it's number nine on trending, which is not surprising. It's a YouTube event. And it currently has 1.5 million views streamed a day ago. I think I ended up getting there right around 322 because I ended up taking a lift from my apartment there because I didn't want to deal with the thought of driving in my gown or in heels. And I just didn't want to have to worry about my car at all. Once I got to the hotel and I was dropped off right at the lobby, there was a couple of different check-in lines. There was a talent check-in and there was a media check-in. And then there was obviously just guest check-in, which was outside and you had to go and do the COVID protocol. So I went and did that. Bumped into Eric and Hassan Kadir outside. So we are in the um, reception area? I think so. I yes. can't really tell where we are and there aren't, there's not very clear signs anywhere. I'm not gonna lie. No, I just keep walking until someone stops me. This does not get me on the red carpet. I did not walk the red carpet. Only certain creators were able to walk the red carpet. And that 
one would have been if you had gotten a red wristband, you would have been able to walk the red carpet. So me and Hassan just ended up going right on into the reception. We were some of the first people in there. And so we weren't sure if we were able to touch the food yet because the, no one had touched it yet and we were worried about it. But the reception was nice. So it started at like pretty much at 3.30, but we were able to go in before that. Very quickly, this whole section of the hotel filled out. Like one room, there has multiple bars. They had a bunch of different food options. And then there was also sponsored by Benefit Cosmetics because they had like a whole like glam and game section set up that was pretty cool and then there was a whole other section with more bars they had dim sum they had like cheese and crackers and bread over there that was nice so i ate pretty quickly because i was like okay people are gonna start coming in through with all the food and stuff so i ate pretty quickly now obviously it was a couple of hours that we were in this area and it was <laughs> a lot this whole time frame went by so quickly. I'm glad that the first thing I did when I got in there was eat because if I had waited, I would have definitely missed the food. Not that they took the food away at any time, but this whole three hour pocket just went by super quickly. And suddenly I, it's like, okay, one minute I'm talking to a bunch of other commentary people and uh, talking to a bunch of YouTube people, met some people from VidCon who have seen my videos. Hi. <laughs> It's fine. I had a couple of people, which was weird. They were like, oh, are you are you nominated? Are you presenting? I like I would have voted for you. I don't know how to reply to that. Like, no, I'm just here to be annoying. <laughs> just swindled my way in. But thank you. What do you say to that? No, I was afraid to apply. <laughs> I don't think I'm important enough. <laughs> but then about about 5.30, they opened up the curtains that then led into the award ceremony area. And so I had to put my glasses on because I could not read the table numbers. Yes, I was going no glasses for a majority of the event until we got to the after party where it was too dark and it was genuinely a hazard for me to not have my glasses on. And before anyone asks, yes, I do own contacts. I hate them. I hate them with my whole life soul. And no, I don't want to get LASIK because that looks terrifying. Also, unfortunately, these things are part of my brand now. More people at this event recognize me once I had these things on my face. So you're stuck with them. So I sat with a bunch of other creators at the table. I knew a couple of them, didn't know most of them. And then for the award show itself, I mean, obviously, aside from the behind the scenes stuff, nothing was really missed from the live stream compared to what I saw at the event. I was pretty much on the outer rim of the whole seating area for the uh, show itself. And so I felt that the outer bowl area for the entire event, they realized they weren't on camera aside from the outer bowl that was on the same side of the stage as Bob the Drag Queen. Once they realized they would not be on camera, no one cared about not talking or um, staying in their seats when rolling or anything like that. So it was a little hard to hear sometimes where I was because just everyone around me was talking a lot. But all in all, it wasn't that bad. I don't expect everyone, if it's not a library, it's a YouTube award show, you know? I'm not expecting you to be quiet. Young Gravy performed, that was cool. I don't get the egg thing. The egg thing, I'm gonna be honest. There was a couple of bits, okay. Listen, I don't have a problem with Eric. <laughs> I don't. Uh, we had the same manager for a little bit. He didn't do a bad job. That's the thing because he didn't do a bad job. But I don't think he was really prepared for this type of he didn't do bad, though. OK, the jokes were a mistake, in my opinion, um, mainly because of his delivery of them. So if you have never seen um, the streamies in the past, there is usually a bit of a roast element like most award shows. The hosts are making jokes at the expense of attendees, uh, nominees, the like. Run, Barrett, you are most likely to copy my thumbnails. <laughs> so for a couple of times, uh, it seemed like there were joke segments that were written into the teleprompter, obviously, and Eric was doing the jokes. And what happened multiple times was that he was apologizing for the jokes halfway through or right after, or was clearly visibly uncomfortable with saying the jokes while he was saying it. Not in like a, oh my God, they're holding a gun to my head, but like in a, oh my God, I'm gonna get in trouble kind of way. Government, you're always trying to teach people lessons. It's about time somebody taught you a lesson. <laughs> so Jerry, can you get him out of here, please? Sorry, I'm not even, I'm not, okay, yeah. I brought this up to a couple of people at the after party as well because I didn't think he did a bad job overall. And at the end of the day, the host is not there for the attendees or the nominees. They're there for the audience. They're there to bring in an audience more than anything. That's how most award shows go. They're, they, that's why the Oscars, it's such a big deal who is hosting those award shows because they're like, cool, how can we get, how can we get young people to watch the Oscars. So obviously it doesn't really matter if the attendees of the award show itself 
are actually fans of ARAC. At the end of the day, the type of content that ARAC makes isn't for everyone and that's okay. But for the most part, everyone that I know of who has met him has said he's a good guy and they don't have a problem with him. And so I think that that's part of why he was so uncomfortable doing the jokes. I was told from someone else that he was in fact involved in the writing process of the jokes or his team was involved in that type of thing. So I don't know why he didn't just say, hey, I can't say this or I'm not cool with this because I think he really wants to be liked, which is fine. That's not a problem. I mean, he was clearly uncomfortable and I feel like, okay, allegedly, I don't know how true this is. I heard someone say that a couple of people that he made jokes about may have gone up to him and been like, hey, that wasn't cool. Like, watch your back type of thing. That is one rumor I heard at the after party. I, I don't know if it's true. I'm just letting you know what I heard. <laughs> I feel like if Era had just committed to the bit and just said the jokes like confidently, it would have been received better. Instead of the way he ended up doing it, it kind of made it seem like he knew he was doing something wrong, or at least he thought he was doing something wrong. And that's where we had some super awkward moments, like how they had the camera on I Justine after he made his dick at her about like being nominated since 2016 or something. It was something super weird. Yeah, I don't even remember the joke off the top of my head, but they held the camera on her just a little too long after he said the joke. And I was like, Oh, this is awkward. Hi, Justine is here. I don't know where you were at. Um, it's something I would say if it was 2006. I don't get why we needed to do world records. I don't get what that was. I get like maybe another way to go viral. Maybe it's like, oh yeah, a world record was achieved at the streamies. And then when that didn't work, they had a backup world record. And that was not achieved at the streamies either. And <laughs> I still don't get the egg thing. What? Like you could have had someone else jump out of the egg. You guys had someone make that. You guys had an egg made to make a joke about Bretman Rock not being there. <laughs> like, I don't, what? I hope someone viewing it found that funny because everyone in there was like, what is going on with the egg? And like, we were all kind of waiting. Like everyone at my table was like, is someone gonna jump out of the egg? Like, what is happening? No, they just rolled it, rolled it off stage. I have questions. Who had to take that home? Did you leave that at the Beverly Hilton? Where is it now? Can I have the giant egg? <laughs> I do want to know who chooses what categories are televised and what categories are announced in a slideshow. I just thought it was interesting that you had all the commentary nominees show up and then you guys didn't televise that category. And then you have all these categories that of people who won and then they like weren't there to like get their awards. I want to make it clear that for the most part, this was a very good event. I had a lot of fun. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I want to go again because I don't care if you guys have me back again, frankly. I got to go once, I got it out of my system. If you invite me next year, cool. If I nominate myself next year, cool, you know. Um, <laughs> but I really do want to know who decides what categories are televised and which ones are not because you know, we had cooking, we had breakout creators, understandable, creator of the year, understandable, VTuber, certain things I get. Others, I'm like, maybe this is just because I consider myself a commentary person, but like a major element of popular channels right now, especially among Gen Z, are commentary YouTubers. And so I don't know, I just think that that one should have been televised, especially because you had literally all of the nominees there. <laughs> you find out you're nominated, you go all the way to LA, and then you find out you lose, but also find out you lose from a slideshow where they don't even mention that you were nominated. Really? Like at least show the other nominees and then show who won. Like I think that would be good at least because then everyone gets like their little moment, especially if you ask them to fly out there like I heard you guys did to a couple of people. You're nominated, come out. And then they found out they lost in a slideshow while still in the room after traveling to LA. Just saying. A little nod at who was nominated would have been nice. It's on the website, obviously, but for the award show itself, I think that would have been an easy way to keep people happy and then less people would have things to complain about. That's all I'm saying. They did three creator honor awards and the way that that works is that a previous Streamies winner gets to basically decide who gets a Streamy and it's just a great way for, I think, for creators to support creators, uh, whether they're big creators supporting small creators or otherwise. Of the three, two of them were done digitally and I think that this segment went on too long and I talked to a couple people who also agreed that it went on too long. This is where I think you could trick people into 
going to the streamies, okay? Because you just say, hey, we have an extra seat at our table. Stick them in a ra- random table. And then surprise, you want a streamy. Yay. And then that's going to be faster than these long drawn out videos that these creators get to edit and shoot themselves. You know, it's just that those segments, in my opinion, went on too long. They were very sweet and it was great, but I just think they went on too long. And it just obviously added to the overall time of the award show itself when there was clearly a crunch for time. And I think we went over time a little bit. But I don't know. Like the last one that ended up happening was that Destroying gave a creator honor award to Eric at the end. And it was done in a really fun way where they kind of like shut off the teleprompter. So he thought that the teleprompter stopped working and then his mic stopped working. And then D walked out and gave him his streaming. And I thought that was really nice. It was he was clearly surprised. It was done really well. And I just think something like that is the best way to do that kind of award because then it's really in the moment and you keep it short and sweet and they're panicking and you just get a better reaction than like, oh, yay, I got a streamy. Thank you. Here is the production value of me getting gifted a streamy, you know, that type of thing. And then the award show ended and then it was a bit of a mad dash to get out of there to get to the Sofatel. <laughs> so I was leaving and I was like, I thanked Eric for like letting me join their table and all that. And I was like, cool, now I'm going to find my way to get over an Uber over to the Sofatel. And he was like, oh, well, I'm going to get one. Do you want to come with me? And I was like, sure, yes, what Whatever gets me there because he's the co-founder of Carrot. Carrot is one of the main sponsors of the party. They're not going to not let him in. So I was like, this works. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. And then as we're walking to go to the Uber that he got, uh, he bumped into someone he knew. I'm so sorry. I forgot this person's name. I was in this man's car and I forgot his name. This is a problem. This is my memory issues. I blame this on my father. He's the same way. Um, but I, I can't be doing this job and be this bad with forgetting with forgetting people's names like this is a problem I need to go back to keeping a list in my phone because that's what I used to do at events and I think I need to get back to doing that but this guy was getting his car from valet and uh, Eric was like oh yeah come on and so I got in the back seat and Eric's in the passenger seat so then we got to the sofa tell and I went in and I had my care card so I skipped the short little line there was a little photo spot uh but it, the line was the people in front of me were taking forever. And I had just gotten there. I was like, I don't want to wait. And so I just ended up walking through the step and repeat by myself with my selfie camera because I was alone. So I didn't have anyone to take a photo of me and I didn't want to ask anyone. And then I did a loop around the whole area. This was a really cool setup as well for the hotel itself. And so for the after party, it was really spread out. And really cool. There was multiple bar areas. There were people walking around with food the whole time. Lots of places to sit, which by that point, my toes were killing me and I don't drink. So I don't get that numb foot feeling that you get when you have like two drinks. I don't get that. Okay, so my feet were killing me. And so there was a bunch of places to sit, which was nice. But I walked around, talked to a bunch more people. And then I was talking to someone from YouTube when someone from the after party walked up and was like, hey, so we have an activation around the corner. It's a fun little experience. Yeah, you should check it out before it gets crowded. I was like, okay, cool. Thanks. Let me go check out this activation because I saw that no one was walking over there. So I was like, okay, perfect. And that's where I found the Bumbies. The Bumbies apparently were hired by Jelly Smack, I believe. And what they do is they have their faces covered, headphones on so they can't hear you. And they just write a paragraph based on your appearance and how they perceive you. I am online for a living. You guys judge me all the time. I have never felt more judged than in this moment. And I picked Jill because I liked her wig. I was like, okay, I'll pick you. And then I was like turning to the guy that was like kind of operating everything, the one that was talking to us. And I was like, this is really nerve wracking. Like I'm, I'm standing up straighter. I'm fixing my posture. I'm like, oh, I was taking my glasses off my face. <laughs> and he's like, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I was like, what if I'm just getting roasted right now? She's And they're t- doing it on a typewriter. So it's like, oh, it's it's very nerve wracking. Uh, so anyways, um, this is stamped approved, a fair and honest appraisal of your appearance. And then they take it out and they, they cross it out and they make little edits. You are giving me 2022's answer to Xena Warrior Princess and a little Angelina Jolie at the Oscars with that Slit. Wow, wow, wow. You look like the kind of person who is always surprising people with the depth of your knowledge and you know how to connect with anyone because of your wide ranging interests. You are a connector of a person, someone who knows how to find a bridge or common ground. And if you can't, you will build one because that is what an Amazonian babe like you does. Overall, 9.7. Hashtag streamies. It will go down in history that you were the only person who will ever call me an Amazonian babe out of whopping 5'2". Overall, the after party was nice. Um, I liked this one uh, for the most part much more than I liked the... This, I'm not comparing after parties. I'm just saying overall... Both were fun, but I'm saying I could hear people better at this one than I could at the Instagram after party at VidCon. 
But it was also a bigger room, you know, like it was multiple rooms. There was an outdoor area. like it was spread out. There was options is all I'm saying. I still was yelling to be heard multiple times. But also I do want to say that it's what's been very nice for my experience as someone who doesn't drink going to these parties and events is pretty much every single content creator slash influencer party I've been to, uh, whether it's from Instagram, YouTube, the like, um, there's been mocktails on the menu, like advertised, which is nice as someone who doesn't drink. And I know that's because those creators are all ages. And so that's why they do that. But I just think it's nice. It's another way to be, feel included without being like, hi, can I get a Diet Coke? You know? <laughs> so I just think that's nice. And yeah, I ended up leaving around 1140 because my feet were killing me. And I remembered that I had to walk up like two flights of stairs to get to my apartment. And I was dead on my feet. Originally, I was going to film this the following day. And then instead, I ended up driving out to Tustin, where I'm from. So why I'm here. Yeah, that's kind of it. Posted some photos, took some photos while waiting for the Uber. I had a very fun time. And as always, I really love meeting other creators, not just as someone who, you know, is forever online and loves watching YouTubers and creators, but uh, as a fellow creator, it's a different type of validating to hear that people that you admire, you know, watch your stuff. I'm trying to explain the feeling because obviously I know that you guys watch my videos because I hear from you guys. You guys write me and you guys, I bump into you guys in public and things like that. And you guys tell me that it's like, we're besties and we're, <laughs> we're, I'm telling you about my obsession of the week or like I'm your big sister trying to educate you on the internet or something crazy. And so that is really validating. But then there's also the feeling of having someone whose videos you watch and also admire as a creator tell you that they like your stuff or I don't know that they just see value in your content, even though we make different types of content, things like that. I don't know. I'm not explaining this right at all. It was fun. I had a fun time. Would I go again if they allow me back? Sure. Yes, I would love to attend again. I've gone back and forth with people about this because when I talk about events, sometimes I feel like I'm super harsh and then people are like, no, you were very constructive. Like, and so I never really know how I'm like, I, how I come across to people. Anyways, that's going to be it. Um, thank you again to Carrot for letting me crash your table. Uh, thank you again to the streamies for allowing me in and not vetoing me for trying to get in. <laughs> Have you ever watched the streamies? Do you want to attend the streamies? Is there another award show you want me to try and get into? Let me know, comment down below. <laughs> if you can get me into award shows, let let me know, comment down below. I was literally telling my management, like, tell them I will stand against a wall. I don't even need a seat. Tell the, I just need to get in. <laughs> Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shans podcast. Reminder, I have merch. I don't have a mug to point to. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also explore my Patreon, let me listen down below. Like to follow me on my social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. No, seriously, what's the deal with the egg? Like, where is it now? Was it deconstructed? It looked solid. You guys had it on wheels. Can I have it? Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris P, Crash PC, Hannah, Dirty, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless Incognito, Jekka Ray, James, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Chris, and Lamb, Lexley, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Sierra, Skylar, Simon, Taj, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tom, Querty, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Williams, Andrews, Wink.